question is really, I mean, starting out, how much did you know about David Bowie before you even began? Uh, well, that's actually it's a very good... Do you know, that's the first person who's ever asked me that question. <laughs> um, I knew a, a kind of reasonable amount. I mean, I run the theatre and performance department, but... Uh, you know, you have to have very wide knowledge. But right. for, you know, it has to be quite. You know, it's quite shallow. You just can't keep all this stuff in your head. I mean, I grew up in the. I was a. You know, I was a teenager in the in the uh, early seventies. So I knew yeah, about Bowie then. Although I have to say, I wasn't a fan of his at that time. Uh, I got more, I got more interested in him in the late seventies when he got into kind of electronic music. Um, but I knew the sort of the, the. You know, I knew the key things. I mean, one of the extraordinary things about Bowie is that. There are so many books written about him. Is, uh, is that virtually every aspect of his life has been documented in astonishing detail, and yet at some level, it's um, you know a lot of the books you kind of feel they're kind of missing something, and I think that's what we wanted to try and do, in a, which you can only do in an exhibition because books, by their very nature, tend to be kind of linear. They tend to be very chronological, and what we wanted to do was just give you a sort of feel of being soaked in Bowie world, I suppose, is, is, you know, and uh, you might say, well, that's being very lazy, and isn't that just a question of kind of, uh, you know, oh, we just stick the stuff in, and some people have said it, the exhibition seems to be kind of chaotic, and, but there's a deliberate, uh, that's partly deliberate, because at some level, I think Bowie's way of working, I wouldn't say it's chaotic, but it's extraordinarily planned, and yet at the other times, you know, these accidents happen, and he picks up on them, and he just goes with them, and he's... You know, he doesn't. I don't think he sees one as better than the other. He just is fascinated with how the media works, and manipulating the media, and pulling pulling the strings, and seeing what happens, and doing it. You know, he'd say, you know, I left school at 16. You know, I didn't really have many qualifications. I didn't have, you know, you know, a very ordinary background. So if I can do it, anybody's doing. It. Anybody can do it. And you know, everybody sits around saying, oh, you know, I can't get coverage. I can't do this. And he's saying, actually. You know, if you try hard enough, you know, you've got to ask yourself why, you know. And I've done it, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I think that's what's really, really very, very subversive about Bowie, is that actually he says, the most important thing is not me, it's you, and what's inside your head. What are you doing about what you're thinking about? Are you just saying, oh, I've got an idea for a book or a film, but I'm never, ever going to do it? I'm just going to... Uh, so, I think... To do an exhibition like that, you know, we wanted to do two, th two things. One was um, show you know, the astonishing amount of things he has done, but also inspire it to other people. Well, it's an extraordinary thing to say, but in the comments book in the exhibition in London, someone wrote in it, they said, I am a 55-year-old a fat, balding git. Um, I've been divorced twice, and I can't understand how David Bowie's achieved so much. I don't think I've achieved anything. And in a way, it was very sad, but... Also, Bowie would say, actually, that's the opposite of what, you know, because actually you can do something at any time. Right. And, and I think that's what he's always pushing people to think about. Hmm. So, in terms of curating this down, hmm. I mean, my understanding is that there was, he had 75,000 hmm. items in his yeah, I mean, it, collection. Yeah, he's got an archive, which here's a professional curator who looks after it. I mean, a lot of that's photographs. It's amazing. But there's a norm, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, but it's a, you know, uh, it's a huge number of costumes, and as you can see here, these are all original lyrics. These are the original, right. you know, him sitting down writing it. Yeah. And it's the sort of stuff that most people just chucked in a bin. Um, <laughs> uh, and, um, in fact, it's really, I think, over the last four or five years that he, sort, he got a curation to sort of sort it all out. Mm. I mean, I think it had been scattered all over the place. Right. So when we first went to see it, it, it had been sort of organised and, and um, uh, put in... Uh, you know, it all been documented. So that was a huge help in trying to do the exhibition because it, we did it in about two and two years, which is pretty quick. Hmm. Um, but it was a it was a huge task trying to select objects and also uh, not trying to overwhelm people. Right. But at the same time, his interests are so diverse. I mean, he's designed wallpaper. I mean, right. kind of like you know, and we you know we had this big debate: were we going to put it in there? Uh, or not, and, I, and we thought, well, actually, why not? You know, because yeah. actually, why don't people design wallpaper? You know, people think it's like something you know you never do. The other thing uh, in, in London, um, uh, there's quite a lot of comment about. There is actually a um, a tissue with lipstick on it, which, they, which actually came out of a pocket with a cane spoon, actually, out of one of the jackets, which is how it survived. <laughs> and somebody said, this is like, um, it's almost kind of like a holy relic, right. and that's why we put it in because, in fact, at some level. Uh, for many people, Bowie has this kind of kind of quasi. He's, a, he's almost gone beyond being a sort of superstar. He's moved into this kind of category of being, you know, almost um, 
it, it, there's a kind of semi-religious sort of aspect to it. And we wanted to reflect that as well, as, you know, so we were trying to get all those sort of feelings into it. So to answer the question David Bowie is, David Bowie couldn't be all of these, these things. In fact, a professor of Byzantine uh, history at Oxford uh, wrote an essay saying that he was going to send all his students to see this because it's the first time he'd ever seen an exhibition which explained how in the medieval period you could be a human being and a saint at the same time. <laughs> and I, you know, it sounds sort of funny, but actually in a sort of way, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to have something that uh, people, you know, who in their 40s, 50s, 60s, who sort of grew up with him in his really radical phrase. But for younger people, they see it from a completely different uh, way. So hopefully we've done that. But people ought to come down here and come and see it. And uh, we have thick skin, so, uh, you know. Amazing. Well, well, my last question is, yeah. what's the most amazing thing you learned about David Bowie then? For me personally, and, I, um, I, and this wasn't in, um, in any of the, it's not mentioned in any of the books about him, is that... Um, between 1972, when he started the Ziggy Stardust tour, and 2004, so that's 32 years, he performed, um, on average, once every 11 days. Now, I mean, I know a lot of that was con I know a lot of that was concentrated on tours where he was performing every, you know, every right. night. He'd be, you know, I don't know, he'd be in Toronto and then going off to Montreal or whatever. But that is an astonishing work, right? If you imagine that you had to do an interview, you know, if someone said to you, go and interview Barack Obama tomorrow, you think, oh, that's quite good for my career. And then someone <laughs> says, well, go and do uh, David Cameron or have you, you know, you know, you think. And then if you say, actually, you're going to do that for the next 32 years, you think, <laughs> and I think that is, sorry, and the fact is he loves performing, like yeah. performers do. And he's got this astonishing work rate, and that's how he's achieved so much. So to me, it was thinking about that and wondering, did he sort of always think that what his life was going to be like? Right. Or did it just happen as an accident? And in a way, who knows? But that to me is, is the astonishing thing. You know, he sold millions of records and, you know, he's done all these sort of things. But actually, that to me is a, the most amazing thing. Just sheer, out on the road, performing, you know. It's amazing. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you.